Hey guys, Mike here from Motomule. A few videos back, Ethan and I unboxed some fancy components to build some Porsche 930 CV axles for this street bike powered golf cart buggy. In today's video, we're finally going to assemble those axles and get them installed on this buggy. All right, let's mess with the actual CV joint itself. Um, when you're messing with these things, I like to use an old cookie sheet. Don't uh, use your wife's nice one. Get, one, get an older one that uh, can get a little messed up. So let's kind of just look at some of the elements of this thing, you know. As long as you support it while you're moving it around, it won't fall apart on you. But if you're not careful, it'll fall apart. And if it does fall apart, it's not a big deal. So to start with, let's look at the outer case. This is the, the part of it you're gonna see even after it is installed. You'll notice there's a groove on one side. That groove is always towards the outside of the axle. So it'll either be mounted to your gearbox or it'll be mounted to the flange on the hub of your wheel. That's just a, always to note that that is on the outside. So if you had a pair of these with an axle between them, that groove is on the outside. When you look at the inside of the CV, you'll notice that the inner star has a raised flange on the inner surface. So the inner star has something notable on the inside of the axle. The outer case has something notable on the outside. So keep track of that. One thing to notice on the outer case, if you look at the area under each hole, you'll see that every other one of them is different. At this hole, the outer case is brought down to a real narrow point. At this hole, there's much more material here. It's wider, narrow, wide, narrow, wide, narrow, wide, all the way around. If you look at the inner star, it's exactly the opposite. The narrow lines up with the wide, the wide lines up with the narrow, so forth and so on. So now, let's go ahead and let this thing fall apart. If you twist it a little too much, all the balls will fall out, and you'll see why I use a cookie tray when I do this, so the balls don't roll off the table. Okay, before I get too far, so this is the way it was in there with just the balls removed. If we look at the inside, so I've still got that raised flange on the inner star. So let's drop this over here. We've defined on the outer case, this is outside, and so therefore this is inside. With the inner star, we've defined that this raised flange is the inside, so therefore that is the outside. The last thing we need to, to look at is this ball cage. If you look at that, I haven't pulled the inner star out of it, so we know this is the inside. If you take some calipers and you measure this side, and you may be able to just do this with a tape measure, we got about 2.2 inches. If we flip it over and look at the outside, Two point one inches, you know, two point one eleven or twelve, but basically it's a hundred thou difference. The ID of the outer surface of this ball cage is smaller than the inner one, so you've got this larger ID on the inside of the CV. So now you have a way to distinguish each one of these pieces, so you can put it back together correctly. So here we've got the outer case. This line defines outside, so I'll set that face down. So the inside of it is up. If I look at this, I could spin it all around, forget. I measure 2.115, 2.2 something. So this is the bigger, the bigger ID is the inside, so I can leave that stacked up. And then this star, flat face, raised face. So this is the inside. So all of these are laid here with their inside surface pointing up. 
and then the balls are just lined up there in the corner. All right, I'm gonna slide this out of the way, bring over a little container, and then I'm just gonna take a little time with some solvent, you know, some, some brake clean or whatever you wanna use, acetone or something, and just kinda clean these things up. Get all the, any grit or anything out of them. At this point, when people are really trying to push the limits of how far the CV can move safely, they'll end up polishing this uh, inner star and taking away any you know sharp edges or ridges and just trying to smooth that out a little bit. Same thing here, they'll, they'll bevel over all of these corners and edges, soften those, and then polish the tracks inside this outer race. And uh, they'll even go as far as getting balls that measure, you know, a thousandth of an inch smaller, just to give the, the CV a little more range of motion. Um, my suspension is, I've got really long axles, 30 inch long axles. I'm not even pushing these CVs close to their max range in stock form. So I'm not going to worry about going through the trouble of all that polishing and everything to try to get a little more motion out of them. I just wanted to point out that uh, some people do do that to get more range out of one of these CVs. After you got everything all cleaned up, you just put it back together opposite the way you took it apart. So I've got this stacked here with the larger opening up and this here with that uh, raised section pointed up. So I just want to keep that orientation the same. And then I'll, I've got this, the groove down, so that's the outside, inside faced up. So you put this all back in here. Spin that inner star around to where the wide lines up with a narrow, narrow lines up with a wide, get all that orientation correct. And then just uh, drop a ball in, Maybe from this side, every other one. And then, kind of carefully pick it up, flip it over. And then it's often easier to get the, the last three in from the other side. And the last one is kind of a challenge. There you go. So you get it all put back together. So, and to verify, if I keep my same orientation, I've got this groove to the outside. So that's the surface that would mount to a flange on the hub of your wheel or to a flange on your gearbox, the outside. Flip it over, I've got the raised section of the inner star and I've got wide on inner star lined up with narrow on outer case and vice versa, all the way around. And so that's how you put it all back together. Once you've got all four CV joints all cleaned up, then the next step is to put the boots, slide those onto your axle, and slide a CV on each end of the axle. So here I've got the groove to the outside, just like I mentioned before. One last thing we gotta do before we grease these babies up, we need to make sure that these CV joints are in phase with each other. So I'll kinda show you what that's all about. To get the CVs on this axle in phase with each other, if we look at one end, it needs to be opposite of the other. So if you look down where this is touching the table, we have the small tab sticking up. If we come around to the other side of the axle, you'll see that there's the large tab sticking up. So this axle has CVs that are in phase with each other. I'm not going to try to bother filming the next part of the process. It involves rubber gloves, messy grease, 
and there'll probably be some swear words, so I'm just not going to film it. Okay guys, we've skipped forward in time. I've already packed all the CVs with grease. Um, if you really want to see a video of somebody packing grease into a CV joint, I'm sure there's plenty of them on YouTube. Um, I don't know any better way than just putting on rubber gloves, scooping it up, and stuffing it in there and working it into the CV joints with your fingers. It's, uh, it's a messy job and I didn't want to be anywhere near my camera during that process. So, sorry I didn't film it, but not sorry. Alright, we have gotten to an exciting step. This is the first time that the engine is actually connected to the wheels. We've got CV axles connected to the gearbox and the chain connected to the engine. So when this thing runs now, it can actually move. Something about this is just pretty cool. All right guys, we're gonna end this video right here. If you got something useful out of this video, please share it. Share it on your own personal social media page. Share it on a forum that you frequent where other members of that forum might get something useful out of this video. All right, as always, hit that like button if you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video.